This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com, and today we're continuing our platformer tutorial for Game Salad. If you have been following along, you should have your project at the right state. If not, you can download the project file from MonkeyUncle.com in our template section. Uh, the, you want to start with platform tutorial 004, and we will be starting today with our fifth episode and that is elevators. We're going to be splitting this into two parts. Today is going to be horizontal elevators and our next episode is going to be vertical elevators. So if you have your platformer tutorial 004, I want you the first thing I want you to do is save it as 005. And we're going to create as I mentioned, we're going to be doing two platforms, the vertical and horizontal. So let's go ahead and create both of them now. Create a horizontal elevator and our vertical elevator. So let's go ahead and open up the horizontal elevator and we're going to come back to our platformer graphics. We're going to come up here to, um, this is actually the ground, and instead of using dirt, we're going to go down to where it says planet, and we're just going to drag planet into PNG. So I'm going to drag this over here. Oh, and we have an error. And that's why we save often. Now there was just an update today with Game Salad. So I'm guessing that's probably part of the issue. I'm going to go ahead and open up version 5. And let's try that again. So we're going to go back in Actors. And it wiped out everything. So we're going to create those two actors. Elevator. I'm just going to call it Elevator H. And elevator B. H for horizontal, B for vertical. And we're going to save it. Now we're going to horizontal, and again, we're going to drag this over. Now it did manage to copy that file in the directory. I'm just going to hit replace. Now we have our graphic. We're going to come to size. We're going to change this to 64 by 64. And we're going to do that, but I'm going to come back and change this width so it's a little bit larger. But before I do that, I want to come down to graphics, change this horizontal wrap mode to tile. That way we can make it as big as we want. We're going to do the same thing with vertical. We want to make sure that these two, the tile width and tile height, are 64. And now that we have that, we can sit there and change this to 128. And even though it looks odd up here, it should be okay. Uh, where we put it. Now we're going to go ahead and create some attributes. So click on the plus sign. We're going to create first uh, some real attributes. And one more, and now we're going to create an integer attribute. All right. So the first one we're going to call this static y. We'll call this next one start x. The next one start y. Uh, sorry, uh, end x. And this final one, which is the integer, we're going to call speed. We're going to give it a speed of 100. And these we can just leave the way they are. Now we do want to also come in here to physics. And we don't want this to bounce. So we're going to just hit 0. We're going to change friction to 0 and density. We're going to change that to 999999. Uh, we're going to change it to fixed rotation. And we're going to leave it as movable. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a change attribute. Now remember, we don't want it moving up and down. So to 
make sure that we do that rather than giving it a fixed position wherever we put this on the screen we're going to grab that position and change oops, sorry I actually did this in reverse a little bit of dyslexia there we're going to change our elevator static y to wherever this is placed so wherever this is placed the first time this y position is going to be at static position and now to make sure that it doesn't move we're going to constrain elevator position y to elevator static y and that way no matter which way we move right and left it will always stay at exactly exact place on the y axis now the next thing we need to do is we need to control the movement now to do that we have two the two variables that we created the two attributes start x and index we're going to move from the start x which will always be and you need to make sure of this the start x should always be your leftmost point and the index should always be your rightmost point so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the motion linear velocity x to self speed and what this is going to do is it's going to give it momentum or movement to the right all right so the first thing we want to check is we want to check to see if attribute position x is greater than our end x because that's the rightmost point then we need to reverse this we want the head left so I'm just going to again do this option alt click and drag and we want it to go speed but we want to head left so that's negative speed so we're just going to change this hits the end goes left all right now let's duplicate this because most of this is going to be the same so now if we're heading left we need to test for that so if it's less than instead of end it's going to be start x so if it's less than start x then we want to change the speed back to positive which will head it right so basically it's going to move between two points on the horizontal axis now we will be adding some additional things but let's go ahead and place this and see what happens notice I have not set anything in the X and Y start X start Y yet that's because you're gonna have to set that within the scene so let's go back to our scene and let's put the elevator right here so take your elevator and drag it now notice how it's now a double instead of being stretched now to get the start and finish coordinates what you need to do is to move it where you want it to start so I'm gonna put it right there click on it you don't want to unlock it you want to leave it the way it is but if you click on position you'll see the X position this is going to be your start X so we can just come right down here and edit this start X and make it 750 okay now we're gonna go back now take it and move it to its endpoint so I say I want the endpoint to be here click on it again now whatever it is here which is 942 I'm just going to change that to 942 so our beginning is 750 our end is 940 so now I'm going to go back again and let's save this make sure we're good in case it crashes and I'm going to it's easier to line up with this one so I'm going to maybe make it slightly below 
There we go. And now let's go ahead and see what happens. So save it. Now let's preview and we have a moving platform. So let's see what happens. I'm going to walk over. Oh, what happened? Do we know what happened? If you've been watching these tutorials, you probably already know. And that is if we go back to scene and scene layers, you guessed it, it's probably here in the HUD. So let's go ahead and move it down. Now, one thing I want to do is we're going to take this player and we're going to move it all the way to the top here. Okay. Just because I want it to look nice there. All right. That's not really a reason, but you'll see later. So now if I walk over, it's no longer on the HUD layer. So next time it comes over, I'm going to walk over it and, ah, oh, I fell down. I bet you can guess why. Now if we come over here to Actors, right now we're only testing against this platform. So what we need to do is we're going to create a new tag here for Actors. We're going to call it Solid. Or solid. We're also going to create another one called elevators. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click back on all and I'm going to drag platforms and elevator H and elevator V into solids. Okay. And that way if we save this and test it now I'm going to hop up and I'm going to jump and I went right through because what I have to do is come in here into player and remember we did this collide right now it still says actor type of platform because we created a tag we're going to change this actor of type to actor with tag and change this to solid Now if I come over here and I jump, I land, but notice, ah, I fell down. Now why did I do that? Well, the even though the platform is moving, we have no control over, or it's not influencing this player. So we need to make the rules to have this player stick to the top of the elevator when he's on top of it. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new rule under elevator. I'm going to say when this actor overlaps or collides with type player, so when it's touching a player, then what we're going to do is we're going to constrain an attribute and what we're going to constrain is elevator, or I'm sorry, game. Nope, oh, we have not created those yet. So we need to create some game attributes so that we can pass the information back and forth between them. And what we're going to create is I'm going to go ahead and create ones for, we're going to create two reels and Actually, let's make this a real too. So we're going to create the first one is called player riding X. The second one is player riding Y. This final one is elevator top. And that'll be more useful for the vertical than the horizontal. So let's file save. Let's go to elevator. And now we can constrain this game attribute we just created, which is player writing X to self position X. And what that does is it's going to keep track of the X position of this elevator whenever the player is touching it. Because the player needs to know where this elevator is so that it can act on it and basically stick itself to it. So now let's come back to the player and we can go down here to the end 
and create a new rule. And we're going to say when the actor touches or collides with an actor of type elevator horizontal because this rule is specific to that what we're going to do is we're going to do two things first we're going to create a new real we're going to call this my offset and then we're going to drag a change attribute over here and we're going to change this player my offset to game, remember that variable, player writing x minus player position x. That's going to give us the offset between these two positions. Now, once we have that, to stick it to the elevator, we're going to constrain player position x again this is only while he's on the elevator to player I'm sorry game player writing x minus player my offset now the only thing this will this will cause a problem when you're trying to move because you'll be stuck to the platform. So let's add two more conditions here. So when it's colliding with an elevator and when attribute, change both of these, when game, button left, and game, button right are both faults meaning we're not trying to move left or right and we're on the elevator so he's just basically standing still in the elevator we want to do this which will stick it to the elevator I'm going to call this riding the horizontal elevator all right so let's save it preview we're going to walk over and hop on and oh, there we go I'm riding the elevator and I can actually move now notice that I'm no longer see how he's still stuck kind of stuck in jump mode and the reason that is if you remember let's hit go back to the player in this in jump routine we did an overlap of collides with platforms. So we need to change this to when we tag of solids, then it's going to end that jump. So let's go ahead and play again. I'm going to jump on here and oh, I can walk. Oh, I'm having a good old time walking around the elevator, jump off the elevator. And jump back on the elevator. And there we go. We now have a working horizontal elevator. Take him over the deadly spikes. And tomorrow we're going to cover vertical elevators, taking them up and down. And I hope you've enjoyed this session. This is session five of our platform tutorial for Game Salad. You can find these up on monkeyuncle.com along with all of these templates. Thanks. We'll see you next time.